Now friends, we're turning in our Bibles tonight, please, to the Old Testament. And we're turning to the Old Testament book of Job, please. The Old Testament book of Job. If you close your Bible tight and you open your Bible right in the middle, you should come to the book of Psalms. And when you come to the book of Psalms, go backwards and you'll find that the previous book to the book of Psalms is the book of Job. And we're in Job tonight, chapter number 16. The book of Job, chapter number 16. Now from day one since this mission commenced, and in the days leading up to this mission as I sought the Lord for his message, and for his messages every evening, very clearly and very directly, the Lord impressed it upon my heart to bring messages, and they're his messages, they're not my messages, they're the Lord's message. And I discovered that the Lord's message for each night was a message to deal with questions that are on people's hearts today. Questions that are relevant for today. You remember how this mission commenced with the opening with the opening question, I believe a question that a lot of people are asking themselves today. That question was, is there really hope for me? Do you remember how the Lord spoke to us from that little text in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 12 where it says, and it speaks about the unsaved and how they live. And that text says, having no hope without God in the world. And that's how the unsaved live from day to day. Having no hope without God in the world. If you're not saved in this meeting tonight, no matter how religious you are, no matter what church you go to, no matter how good a life you're living, that's how you're living tonight. That's how you're going through life tonight, having no hope without God in the world. And my dear friend, that's an awful way to live. Having no hope without God in the world. But I'll tell you something else, friend. It's an awful way to die. Imagine dying tonight, having no hope. Without God. Listen, love, any dear person in their right mind doesn't want to live like that or don't want to die like that. Imagine living and dying with no hope. Imagine living and dying without God. You may say to me, well, just wait a wee moment, George McConnell. Can you tell me where there is real hope? I can tell you where there's real hope tonight. Real hope is found in a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Real hope's not in a church. Real hope's not in a religion. Real hope's not in a denomination either. Real hope tonight. Hope for life. Hope for death. Hope for eternity. Is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where real hope can be found. Then there was another question we dealt with one night. Are you sure of heaven if you were to die tonight? That's another question we dealt with. Tell me this, sir. Are you sure of heaven if you were to die tonight? Are you absolutely sure that you'll be in heaven if you were to die today? For mind you, there was people in London this time yesterday, and they didn't think they were going to die last night. Nobody knows when they're going to die, love. 
Nobody knows when they're going to die, sir. But here's the question. Are you sure that you're going to heaven if you were to die tonight? You think of those young people in London yesterday. This time yesterday, that life was just as normal. Ah, but little did they think they were going to die that night. Little did they think they were going to die last night, friends. Now here's the $60 million question. Are you sure you're going to heaven if you were to die tonight? Thank God you can be sure. There's a whole lot of people, oh, I love to be in heaven, I want to be in heaven, but I'm not sure. Well, I can tell you, friend, you can be sure tonight, because the only way you can be sure of getting into heaven is by repenting of your sin and coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what the Lord Jesus says? The Lord Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. Your church can't take you to heaven. I'll tell you something about that. My church can't take you to heaven. I can't take you to heaven. There's only one way to heaven, right? And that way is through a person and the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say in John 10 and 9? He says, I am the door, and by me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved. Now, friends, here's the question. Are you sure of heaven tonight? Are you sure of heaven if you were to die Tonight. All these questions that people have, all these questions that people can't find answers to. But I tell you, your answers will always be found in the Bible. Because the Bible is the Word of God. <laughs> Remember that other question we dealt with one night? What will it take God to do to bring me to my senses? Remember that night in Acts 16? We we'll read about a man there called the Philippian jailer two minutes to midnight. He had no time nor thought for God or the things of God. And at midnight, friend, there was an earthquake and he was down on his hands and knees trembling, crying, What must I do to be saved? You know what God showed us that night? From the word of God, God showed us sometimes God has to do terrible things to bring us to our senses. People are so hard today. People are so antagonistic today. People think, oh, I can go through life without God. I'll tell you something now, friend. God loves you too much to let you go to hell too easily. God doesn't want any one person this week and to go to hell. And sometimes, listen to me, sometimes God has to do terrible things. Sometimes God has to bring sickness up. Not the first woman I knew, not the first woman at all I ever knew, who had no time for God or no time for this, no time for the other thing, until they discovered a wee lump. I could take it to another home tonight. But this other man had no time nor thought for God until his brother's coffin was wheeled up the hallway. His brother was a Christian. And he would tell you, God had to send my brother home in a coffin to awaken me. Listen, sir. Be you careful how you listen tonight because God might have to talk loud to get through to you to see sense, to, for you to see sense. To. And God speaks sometimes. God has to talk loud. To get us to listen. But on this closing night of mission, God wants to speak to us from his own word. He wants to answer another question tonight. The question is tonight, perhaps you're in this meeting and you're not saved, and here's the question that you perhaps may have been asking. What is the real story, the real story of my life and my death? Everybody can write their own story. Everybody can write their own life story. Ah, but what is the real story? 
What is the real story of my life and my death? You know where you'll find the answer? You'll find the answer in the book of Job, chapter 16. Just one word. Now here's the story of your life tonight. And here's the real story. And here's the real story of your death. Now the real story. The real story of your life. And the real story of your death. Job 16. Verse 22. This is what we read. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. Can I ask you a wee question before I go any further? Is there anything about that verse that you don't understand? <coughs> Is there anything about that verse that, that you disagree with? When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall not return. Do you know, friend, in that one verse tonight, you have a very confronting truth you cannot deny. God wants you tonight, sorry, God wants this truth tonight to grip your heart. God wants this truth tonight to grip your soul. God wants this truth tonight to grip your mind. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence. I shall not return. You see that verse, love? That's the story of your life. See that verse, sir? That's the story of your life, no matter who you are. That's the story of all our lives. And I want you to notice, friends, three things about that verse. Well, it's not me that wants you to notice them. It's God that wants you to notice them. You know what the first thing God wants you to notice in that verse? God wants you to notice ver in, uh, in that verse. He wants you to notice the brevity of the years. He says, when a few years are come. Now listen to what it doesn't say. It doesn't say when many years come or numberless years come. He says, when a few years come. You know what we need to remember tonight? You know what God wants us to remember tonight? He wants us to remember this great truth, the brevity of the years. Let me tell you this, dear friend. What is a year now? Sure, a year is nothing. A year is nothing. Life at best is very brief. Like the falling of a, she like the falling of a leaf. Like the binding of a sheaf be in time. Somebody says, the older you get, the wiser you get. Well, we're all getting older, but not everybody's getting wiser. You know what the book of James says about life? It's, he says, for what is your life? It is but a vapor. A vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then it just vanisheth away. Do you know what your... You know what a vapor is, love? A vapor is something that you can snuff out just like that. Just snuff it out like that. A vapor. Listen, sir. That's what your life's like to me. A vapor. That appeareth for a little time and then it, it vanisheth away. Do you know what I've started to do now? 
I started to look back to the age that my father was that I am now. And I can remember my father well when he was at my age and I thought he was an old done man. That's right. But I can remember well my father at my age. And it only seems like yesterday. It only seems like the other day. And now my father's dead and he's gone. And I look back now and I'm now the age that he was. I hear people saying, you know, boys, time marches on, doesn't it? Listen, time doesn't march on, sir. Time doesn't march on. You know what time does for all of us? Time runs out in all of us. Time doesn't, time doesn't march on, time runs out. When a few years are come, people say, like, oh, let, doesn't life fly? Doesn't life fly? I'll tell you, life doesn't fly. Life just runs out. Do you know when I was a young fella, to tell you the truth, see, when I was a young lad, I hated school. Hated it with a passion. See, the school I went to, it's now called Lachlan and Clyde College. It's actually, back in them days, it was known as Lachlan and Clyde College. See, when I was at school, I never felt like a pupil. I felt like more of a prisoner of war. Did the old school? Hands up if you ever. You know the beauty about my our school I went to. You know the lovely thing I enjoyed about our school was three o'clock and mixing class. Hands up if you ever mixed class school now. Be honest. Hands up. Right. I'll take your names down and I'll hand up to the master later on. And I thought I would never see the day that I would leave school. Thought it would never come. Well, it came. And then I thought I would never see the day when I would get my first set of wheels. Never thought I would ever see the day when I would get my wee blue license. You remember the wee blue license? I'll never forget buying my first car, a wee Talbot Sunbeam. DOY 107T was the registration number. Great week car until I wrote it round a telegraph pole. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, you know, well, I've now left school. I had my first car. I wonder when I'll meet Mrs. Red. I wonder when I'll meet the wife. And of course I met her and I've never looked behind me since. But here, I often wonder, wonder, often wonder, what's my children going to be like then? Will I have a boy or will I have a girl or will I have one of each or will I have many will I have? And that seems so far away to him. Now we have reached the point of life where both of them are getting married. Remember talking to a wee lady one day, and this is what she was saying, she says, you know, George, life, don't you be talking to me about life, she says. I remember the first man I went with a married. And she says it was me and him who put a wee house together, and me and him will live for a couple of years, and then the wains come along. Six wains. And our house was alive, and Oh, many, many happy years this, this house knew of us two and the Wayne. Many years of happiness, many years we have enjoyed them. But then, one by one, they grew up and they've now left home and it was just back to me and him again. And she says, George, now it's just me because he's now gone. It's just me now. Where have the years gone? That was the question. But here's the reality. 
People say tonight the years come and the years go. The years don't come and go. The years come, but it's us that go. You remember that tonight? The years don't come and go. The years come and it's we that go. The brevity of the year. Here's another part concerning your life story tonight. There's the brevity of the years and then there's the certainty of the years. Because if you look at that little text again, look what it says. It says, when a few years are come, then I shall go the way. You know what God wants us to really see in that verse tonight? God wants us to see tonight that life for all of us in this tent will come to an end. The Bible says tonight, the Bible says tonight, it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this is the judgment. Then I shall go the way. You see, when a few years are come, that's the story of your life. Then I shall go the way. That's the story of your death tonight. Do you know what that tells me tonight? Do you know what that teaches me tonight? That teaches me tonight, friends, that there's not one of us under this tent tonight that's here forever. Then I shall go the way. Friends, Ecclesiastes 3 and 20 says, All go to one place, all are of the dust. And listen, friends, you mightn't be 80 years of age. You mightn't even be 50. Listen, you might only be a teenager here tonight. Do you know what age the person was? The first coffin I ever carried. You know what age the person was in the coffin? 14 years of age. 14. Not 84, 94, 44, 14. Nobody is guaranteed a long life. Nobody's guaranteed tomorrow. And this is why we need to think of our soul and we need to think about eternity now friends boast not thyself of tomorrow for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth listen do you know what that text says that text says that we're all going to take our turn in the hearse we've all walked behind a hearse many times but we all will take our turn in the hearse You know, people never think of dying. People never think about life coming to an end. People never think about the realities of life as we know it. Life as we know it, friends, won't always be. People live for the here and now. Remember a big businessman just outside Ballygolly owned a big black yard. Oh, a millionaire, I don't know, many times over. He was up in Kelly's Inn, up the Omer Road, having a lunch with a businessman one day. The sales shop asked him, well, John, how's the, how's the business going? Couldn't be going any better. Couldn't be going better, he says. Business is booming. Making money by the bucket funds. That's what he was saying. They struck up a deal. Shook hands and off they went. And John got into the car, or into the van it was, and he reversed out, and the foot slipped of the clutch. And the van jumped out in the middle of a road where there was a lorry coming, and it cut the van clean in two. And John, that was it. Dead and gone. Just like that. Life couldn't be better. Making money by the bucket load. Just one wee slip of the clutch. That's all it took. When they were having lunch that day in Kelly's Inn, 
He didn't think when he went out through that door he was going the way of all the earth. You see, everybody lives for the here and now. With no preparation needed. And you know, friend, do you remember the man in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12? He looks at the whole situation. He says, boys, I have much led up for many years. Eat, drink, and be merry. And God said to that man, thou fool, for this night thy soul shall be required of thee. What, have, what would happen tonight if God's putting his finger right upon you tonight? Right upon you and saying, right, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. How would you face God? How would you meet God? How would you end your days? You don't have to be sick to be taken. And I'm going to finish tonight with the finality of the years. Because this is what it says. Whence I shall not return. People say death is a once and for all experience, not a bit of it. It's a once and forever experience. When a few years are come, I shall go the way from whence I shall not return. You know what that means tonight? That just simply means what it means. When you watch an undertaker carrying a coffin out of the womb, that person never returns again. That's the reality of your life, and that's the reality of eternity. Once you die, there's no coming back. Once you die, there's no coming to another mission. Once you die, you go, that's it. There's no coming back. Yesterday evening, I was up visiting my mother. And to tell you the truth, I was sitting on the settee and I was looking at my father's chair. chair that he sat in. And I looked around the different places of our home just thinking of all the times where I saw him there. And I couldn't help but think of the words in Job chapter 7 and verse 10 where it says, And he shall no more return to his house. And the place that you shall know no more. Once your life ends, that's it. And only one thing counts to me. And it's not if you're a Baptist or a Presbyterian. Because denominations of any shape or form doesn't come in. There's only one thing counts when it comes to dying. And listen, I'm telling you now, dying is serious business. You get many a go at many a thing in life, but you'll only get one go at dying. One go. You'll only get one go at it. There's one thing in life you'll only get one go at, and it's dying. And there's only one thing that'll count when it comes to dying. It's not what church you go to or what hymns you're going to have sung at your funeral. Not at all. It's what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ will count. These girls sung about the Lord Jesus and all that he did for you at the cross. 
And my friend, he went to that cross because you have a problem. And your problem tonight is your sin. You were born a sinner. The Bible tells us in Psalm 51, verse 5, you were born a sinner. That's how you were born, dear. That's what, how you were born, sir. Listen, in God's sight, you were born a sinner. You weren't born a Protestant or a Catholic. You were born a sinner. And tonight it's your sin that hides God's face from you. And if you die in your sin, you'll die with God hiding his face from you. But tonight the good news is that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary. And he suffered in your place. And he suffered in my place. He suffered in everybody's place. And friend, the only way you can have that sin taken away and that sin forgiven for you is to come as a sinner to the Lord Jesus Christ and confess to him that you are a sinner and believe in your heart what he done for you in the cross is enough tonight in order for your sin to be taken away and your soul to be saved friend there is no other good enough to pay the price for sin he only could unlock the gate of heaven to let us in but you know friend tonight on that old rugged cross he suffered he bled and he died in your guilty room instead but the story doesn't end at the cross the story goes on to where there's an empty tomb and tonight he's alive and he's alive forevermore and he's in this very tent tonight in the presence and in the power of his Holy Spirit and tonight he is speaking to your heart and tonight he's enlightening your life and he's bringing things before you that has never been brought before you before and tonight he's saying to you why don't you come to me I will forgive you. Come to me and I will save you. Come to me and I will make you whole. Come to me, he says. Come to me. For when a few years are come, then I shall go the way from whence I shall not return. <coughs> With this I'll finish. In 1952, the faith mission had a tent mission just like this outside the town of Five Mile Town in a wee place called Club. A young curtain couple, there were only curtain at the time, attended that mission. And the Lord spoke to both of those couple. He was called Ernie McLean. And Ernie McLean at that mission was under deep conviction of sin. And you called her Eva Jordan. And after that mission was over, God spoke to that couple more times than enough. And the two of them fell in love and both of them got married. And Ernie McLean, one night friend under deep conviction of sin, trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as a saviour. And Eva saw the great change that he placed in his life. They lived many years, and many years Ernie prayed for his wife that Eva would get saved, but, but many years, 26 years I think it was, when Ernie took a serious heart disease, 
and the doctors told him that he wasn't going to do it. They were gathered round the bedside and Eva never left the bedside, always held his hand and one day, one day when his body was so weak, he took her by the hand and he said this, he says, Eva, I can't go to heaven without knowing that you're going to come to heaven with me. I can't bear the thought of me going to heaven and you're not going to be in it. Maybe there's a couple in this tent tonight and she's saved, you're not saved. Maybe, maybe he's saved, but you're not saved, dear. And it's breaking that saved one's heart thinking that just he or she will go to heaven. Without the assurance that you're coming. Maybe there's a mother and praying for a father. Sorry, praying for a father. Maybe there's a parent praying for a child. Maybe a child praying for a parent. And that person who's saved in your home can't bear the thought of going to heaven without you. Do not think tonight's the night. Well, that worry can be taken away. When that unrest can come to an end, when you too will come and put your trust in the Lord Jesus. And there's nothing like household salvation, you know. And tonight you could make this Savior yours. For you, listen, here's the reality of your life tonight. When a few years are come, then I shall go the way from whence I shall not return. There's no coming back, friends. And that's why the Bible says tonight, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. He's here tonight. And he's calling to me. Will you come this evening? Now let's all just bow in a wee word of prayer. As we bring this mission. And as we bring this meeting. To a close. Now friend as other nights. I have made it clear in the past that if anyone here would like to speak to me please feel free to do so I'm not here to force you into anything I'm here to listen I'm here to help in any way that I can I am here to help you and it's important tonight that you that you do get saved because nobody knows. Life can end very quickly, very suddenly, and, and you want to make sure you're prepared to meet God if your time should come before you expect. Now, friend, tonight, you know the Lord has been speaking to you and you've heard his voice, you've felt it. Now, please, now, be careful in these closing moments. And please, don't go unless I can help you. I'm here to help you. I'm a big softy, I listen to you. Just say, George, I would like a wee word. And whoever has brought you, sure, they'll come with you. But let us help you tonight. And I'm going to commit ourselves to the Lord before we sing our closing hymn. Lord, in these closing moments of this meeting and of this mission, Lord, I give thee tonight the entirety of the eternal issues. 
and pray, Lord, you will give deciding grace this evening. I know tonight there's people who want to be saved and they're afraid, Lord, and I pray you'll take them fears away and give them deciding grace, we pray tonight. And as we sing this closing hymn, may the words really speak to their heart and help them to come. I commend them to thee now in our Saviour's name. Amen. Our closing hymn tonight is number